You mentioned the uh, again the fallout of the corporate credit unions, and um, that's had a huge effect on on the credit union industry uh, from regulatory aspect, income, bottom line. Um, what scares you most about what what is happening as a result of the corporate meltdown? Well, what scares me the most is the sheer amount of assessments because um, obviously there's. Uh, you know, 15 basis points a year approximately um, is is a huge drain on credit unions' income. And um, so actually the, the concern, the biggest concern I have is is just simply the amount of loss within those legacy portfolios. That's my number one concern. You know, I think if I were, you know, a credit union CEO, especially a smaller credit union CEO, I would be you know, concerned about about processing and and the like. Although, uh, you know, the credit union system is is um, you know one of its huge strengths is its ability to cooperate. And my sense is when we actually have the corporate rules established, um, you know, Kinder Mutual stands ready to. In fact, I talked to Debbie Matz yesterday. I said we we're ready to help in any way we can help. Uh, and I think the credit union system will come together and find a solution. And a, one of the byproducts of the corporate meltdown is the issue of director indemnification and the way NCUA has handled the uh, situation with the boards of directors there. Um, do you think that could have a chilling effect on volunteer boards' uh, willing to, willingness to serve? I think the answer to that is yes. Um, you know, we are, you know, we're trying to work with the NCUA through their, their, um, you know, opinion time period to try to help them um, understand the difference between volunteer boards and non-volunteer boards. And um, while you know, I, I surely respect the NCUA's. Um, desire to ensure that the board members have fiduciary responsibilities. The agency has also put out an, a notice of proposed rulemaking regarding board member education requirements. Um, what do you think should be included in minimum requirements, if at all? I don't think you need, quote, education requirements, because I think people get educated many different ways throughout their life. I think. At a minimum, board members um, you know, should understand financial institutions, should understand what the, you know, what the credit union stands for and how it delivers its products. Um, you know, there are, you know, there are, you know, I sit on a number of different boards. And I will guarantee you that in, in some of the discussions on those boards, I add very little value because I don't have the experience in that realm. Mm -hmm. There are other places where, you know, I probably add more value than others because quite frankly I've had that experience. So I think to necessarily put down a list of 10 items and hey, you got to check the box of all 10 to be a board member um, kind of misses the point. I think a board needs to be diversified, but it needs to, you know, members of a board you know, if, if you're going to have fiduciary responsibility, you've got to bring value and you have to understand the business that the credit union's in or the business that the, whatever company you're sitting on the board is in.